welcome back to the channel. I really appreciate y'all watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Now let's talk today about zero theory with your AR-15 rifles. And so before we jump into this, we're gonna talk a little bit about the differences in these and where the variances will come in. So you'll see different variances in your own internal dope when you're out there shooting, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, obviously, the first reason is that it matters uh, what size barrel you're using, like what the uh, what, what, what the length is. So if you're talking a 22-inch barrel versus a 11.5, obviously these numbers are gonna be substantially different, but also the grain of the bullet, the twist of the rifling, how worn out the rifling is, all that comes into play. So you need to go out and collect your own dope to actually figure out uh, what, these, what the tolerances are on your individual shooting and, and, and your variables. Um, so these are generalities, okay? Now, there's about three different zeros here that we use, and in the Army, they use meters, right? Because <coughs> everything in the Army is done with uh, the metric system except for temperature, uh, because we work with NATO and stuff like that and all these other countries, and so we do everything with the metric system. The Marines is actually done in yards, and it's a little bit different because um, even though the Marines do everything else in, in meters, I believe so, anyways, I wasn't a Marine, but I believe they still, you know, they track their distances the same way we did in the Army with meters, just when we worked with them, they always seem to know. Um, but uh, but the, they use a 36 yard zero, so it's a little bit different there. Um, but the 36 yard zero is actually a superior zero to the 25 meter zero, and we'll talk about why here in just a second. Okay, so let's talk about what um, what a point blank or a uh, not a point blank a uh, battle site zero is. So a battle site zero means simply that um, if I put a dot here, I'm going to hit either here or here. Right? That's all we're saying is that we're going to hit in this effective zone with that battle site zero, and that we don't have to compensate for the bullet drop and rise and the and, and everything. Uh, just put the dot on, and pull the trigger. That's how the military trains because the military is training a large force and they train to the lowest common denominator, which means they have to have, the military is much better prepared if they have a group of 50 guys that can all effectively employ their weapons and, and, and take down the bad guys versus 45 guys that can't ever get it and that can't figure out how to shoot a fucking firearm and five guys that are studs, right? That's where you get like special operations and smaller units is they start specializing a little bit and they start learning, hey, this is what we what we want to do and this is what we're going to look at. So this is, uh, I was fortunate to always work with small unit tactics, which was uh, really nice and a real blessing on my career. But uh, but certainly this is the, the, the way that the military is built is not exactly what we're looking for as civilians or as law enforcement. So if you're law enforcement or civilians, you really need to be focusing on precision shooting. And so precision shooting means that one, there's a liability in a lawsuit attached to every single bullet that comes out of that barrel. Two, you potentially could be making like hostage rescue shots and stuff like that. In the military, yeah, we do a little bit of hostage rescue training, but that's mostly left to, for small units and, and things like that. You don't deal with it that much on the big army. I've done a little bit of, that, uh, of the training on that, but every time we did the training, it's like you tag the squad designated marksman who's got you know an M1A that's been accurized and he's gonna go use that M1A to take down the bad guy. So he's got a whole different dope. It may be somebody that's gone to sniper school or has spent a lot of time actually training and understanding that dope. So it's not your average rifleman that's gonna end up doing that hostage rescue shot anyway. So <clears throat> that's why there's a little bit of variance in here. So at the bottom, let's start with the Marine Zero, the 36-300. So this is the, a better zero than the Army's 25-300, uh, um, simply because, so 25 and 36, so 25 meters is at, works out to about 28 yards, a little bit less than 28 yards. Um, and so it's not exactly on at 300, it's actually on back, I think it's like 275, 274, something like that. Um, so you're actually gonna be a little bit low at 300, even though they call it 25-300, it's not a 25 25, 300 is it like a 25 and 274 something along those lines uh, somebody if you remember what the numbers are put it down at the bottom and again it's going to vary based on your rifle a little bit so I'm talking about like the standard M4 uh, carbine from the army uh, is like I said it's been so long since I've, I've done it I, I can't remember now exactly what it is but um, so you're going to have this 25 300 and then the Marines use a 36 300 I believe it's 36 yards on the nose and it's on again at 300 yards on the nose for theirs again I was not a Marine so I'm not familiar with their rifles um, in, or, their, or their zeroing process as much as I am with the armies. But um, anyways, the reason that this is a better zero and that this is more accurate is because a 36 yard zero, you're actually gonna be on, on target within five inches of five inch group between zero and 300 and about 350, okay? So the armies, you're actually gonna be on target within about a six inch group on the same platform um, and you're gonna drop off there about the same at the end. So 
there's not a ton of variance in there, but if I can just push out my zero 10 more yards, right, or t yeah, about 10 more, yeah, 10 more yards, uh, a little bit less than that actually, because like I said, it's, it's 28 yards. So um, <clears throat> if I can push out my zero a couple of yards, and all of a sudden I gain a pretty sizable degree in accuracy, right? Five inches to, to six inches, uh, that, that inch matters, girls. So, um, 25 to uh, or, or five inches versus a six inch is is actually a substantial difference um, if we're talking about trying to increase the lethality of a force uh, because once we start shooting in the real world other things come into play right how worn out is the rifle are we in between buildings where it's creating a wind tunnel effect is there a lot of humidity did we zero at this uh, altitude and at this humidity or did we zero back in country before we came all those things come into play and so any degree of accuracy we can gain simply by moving our zero forward just makes sense from a large force. So the reason that the Marines do this and the Army does this is really simple. The Marines are a very, very small group of people. So when they need to make a change and they say, hey, this way works better, we're gonna make this change, they ask the two guys in the room with them and then they adopt that uh, Marine-wide, right? So that's, 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 it's a much simpler process. When the Army does it, it literally takes an act of Congress, it literally takes generals and, and, and colonels and everybody getting on board and saying, yes, we wanna do all this, and then there's some sergeant major it's going to bless on it somewhere, um, and it's a really, really long process. So if the Army decided today that they were going to swap to the 36-yard zero, it would take 10 years to put it into, into actual play. So um, that's why it's, it's different. It's not because this way is better or this way is better so much. It's that this way is inherently better, and these guys just haven't caught up to this way because it takes so much longer. At some point in time, the Army will switch to this, but they may be on a new battle rifle before that actually fucking happens. So, um, anyway, so the, uh, the other thing is, <coughs> is the 5200 meter zero. This is a really, really ideal zero. And I'll tell you why. The 5200 meter zero is the most accurate inside that range, inside that 200 meter, which is really the maximum effective lethality range of a 5.56 bullet. Now, I know people will say, well, you can kill somebody out to 800 yards. Sure. People have, yeah, has it been done? Yeah. Is it, is it a common practice? No. Is there a lot of reason to shoot out that far, especially as a civilian or as, as a law enforcement? No, not really. Even if military, you have squad designated marksmen and snipers that do those longer shots. You're not doing those. Um, so in my eyes, the maximum effective range of a 5.56 bullet is really about 250 and closer uh, because you just lose so much muzzle energy after that um, that it's, it's, again, it can kill somebody, uh, but those bullets tend to move around a lot because they're, they're losing a lot of their a lot of their velocity, and, uh, and and so they have all the wind, you know wind drag and resistance and everything causing those bullets to be all fucked around. So the 200 meters uh, or 200 250, it's about the maximum that we want. So I really want my bullets to be the most accurate in that range. The other thing is, is when we talk about a battle site zero, right? Battle site zero. So I want my bullet to be have as little deviance in there as possible in that battle site zero, uh, simply because. If I'm making close quarter shots that are really fast, right? So if I'm clearing a room going through and then pop, 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 right? Those are really fast. I don't have time to adjust and to say, okay, I need to get this guy at the bottom of my crosshair or whatever so that I can make sure that that four inch gap in there is, is tightened down. So a 50 meter zero is a, uh, is, is a much better option. Now, 10 yards and closer, there's probably not a lot of difference in that because mostly you're talking about the height over bore, your rifle and your optics. So, um, you know, for close close quarter battle, you're probably not going to see a lot of difference. Where you will see the difference is like if you were going to be going through, let's say you were going through like a big warehouse or whatever, like your law enforcement, you're going through, you're on a SWAT team, whatever, you're going through a big warehouse, and those shots that you make are still very rapid, fast succession, succession shots, uh, but it may be at 20 yards, right? It might be a much further shot, um, and so what? What I the way that I think that this should be done is that I think as civilian and law enforcement, we should be zeroing at a 50, 200 meter zero, and then we should be working on our dope and really understanding our dope in the category of 50 meters and below, right? So we really want to understand what our bullet is doing there, and that has more to do with height over bore than anything of the optic. And then when we start building dope going out to like 200, 250, right? At that point in time, we're individualizing our rifle, and we're saying, okay, this is this is how, how my rifle reacts at these distances, and that's really what I'm looking for in it. So uh, 50 to 200, in my opinion, is the optimal one to use. Uh, there are different ones. 
ones, right? Because like you said, we've got the, two, the 25, the 36. There's actually a few other options. There is some debate about whether this should be a 36 or a 37. I believe the Marines use a 36, but there is a, a, a debate about that being a 37. Truthfully, um, I find that to be kind of a moot point. So uh, if you really want to do it, push out to 300 and get you your zero at 300, and then you take this out of the equation. But um, the, the, the one yard difference there comes from difference in optics, difference in barrel lengths, difference in, in twist, difference in bullet grains, all those variances come into play. So uh, just keep that in mind. Okay, guys, so that's your zero theory in a nutshell. I just wanted to kind of go over this because it seems like there's a lot of confusion about it. Um, I just did a class, like I said uh, last week, and uh, I used a 36 yard zero. I was reasonably happy with it. It's not like I had any problems. Every shot we made was closer than 50 yards, so uh, we really weren't pushing out. But uh, um, even in those classes, they do push out to 600 meters in their further one. <coughs> and so you do need to understand the dope of your gun going out that far, just because I think it's not likely that you're going to push out that far and that, that you have to make a defensive shot from that distance doesn't mean that you shouldn't then understand the dope on what your bullet is doing as it continues plummeting towards earth because you may have to make a shot, in which case you're using that drop compensator on there, right, or your mill reticle and pulling it up. And, uh, and, and you might need to, to understand what your rifle does at 550 meters, at 600 meters, at 700 meters. So um, those things are certainly possible and uh, it doesn't mean that, uh, that I don't think that the gun can kill somebody out to those distances. Uh, that's not at all what I said. So if that's what you took out of this, you misunderstood me. Okay guys, really appreciate it. And uh, I wanna thank you guys again for watching. Make sure and like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and we'll catch y'all later.